What's up, nerdlings? What's up, nerdlings? Do you nerd for Mo GameCon? 2021! Let's hit the road. One stop we make on this road trip, and it's for candy. Do you like candy? Do you nerd for candy? I nerd for candy. Would you say you want candy? I want candy. You, What's up, you guys? Are you the guy? Are you yep. the guy with the thing? You have my drugs? You have the thing? Uh, yeah, let me just... Uh, I don't think I you're need, the guy. Uh, I need some Vaseline. <laughs> I got to lube up and pull oh. out of my ass. Oh. Finally, we get to return to Mo Game Con. The very first time we went was all the way back in 2019, and that's starting to feel like a long time ago. I know, yeah. You know, pandemic came along, stopped it from happening in 2020, but we're back, and... It was awesome as always. First and foremost, after a 12 hour drive to Siege, one way. Yeah. This, what, three, three hour, hour two drive? And a, actually, it's more like a two and a half hour drive. I mean, it was, it was nothing. Breeze. I was so like, what, we're nice. here already? <laughs> we're there. <laughs> this time around, we also did something new as far as lodging for the convention. Gaming off the grid, Captain Algebra, Matt Retro Wolf 88, and Peter Waves of Games. We all got together. We got an Airbnb. This was our first time using this service. Yes. But this gave us a whole house. Which I very much prefer because there's nothing worse, in my opinion, than going and hanging out in somebody's hotel room and all they have is two double beds and then maybe an office chair. And then you've got like 15 people in there trying to play video games or hang out. And it's like, there's no nice way of sitting on a bed and not looking awkward and weird. And uh, yeah, it's just, this was way more comfortable. Never start with the head, the victim gets all fuzzy. He can't feel it. Just freaked out about how tall Cap is. <laughs> He's tall. Most people, most people do. Eventually, everybody made it into town. We all got settled in at the Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> and then we ran out, got a quick lunch together, and after that it was back to the house and, you know, just some hangout time, maybe a little bit of game time. Some warmed up moon pies and this beer that Robert's ready to tell you about. Naked River Brewing Company moon pie since 1917, the year I was born. Oh, yeah. This beer is so good, I haven't had it yet. Okay, okay, I'm good. Naked. <laughs> this is a stout with natural flavors, chocolate moon pie stout. 
per tradition though, second year in a row at least, we mm -hmm. went to Two Plumbers, the Barcade. This place is a lot of fun. Filmception. There are some fantastic arcade games mm -hmm. set up. More than anything, it is just such a blast to be able to get together with your friends at an arcade and play some games like in the good old days. Mm -hmm. Retro Wolf 88, Master Gamer, taking down all the machines at Two Plumbers. You saw it here first. That was a glitch got a nice wall of pinball machines that are set up and you really have a good variety there oh what will he pick go for the honda civic did you pick a good one i have no idea oh good job he's just gonna try it out oh, this this is looking a little slippery yeah that's what she said <laughs> you got some great co-op offerings Whether it's two player. He's coming after me while I'm trying to quickly attack Raptors. Whether it's a four player action. Oh, another victory at Two Plumbers Arcade with my boy Wes! Robert helped out a little bit, not really. And the new I was just here. He was just here. Fucking <laughs> another victory. Let's go! It actually wasn't that bad. I only used eight dollars. Or just some good old classics. Tell you what, one of the games I was having the most fun playing was Burger Time. Yes, I don't know I what really drew Burger me to time. it this time, but man, I was having a blast. There's also a really nice giant rack of board games and a long tables in the middle of the room. So if, you know, maybe arcades aren't your thing, but you still want to hang out and have a good beer or, or food, you can play some of their board games, which is really cool. It's just a nice hangout place. And speaking of, they do have some fun and delicious beers on tap there. I'm getting a little banana on the nose. Mm. I was enjoying the cherry baba myself. And actually when John Riggs came in, he bought, I believe me and Cap around yeah. too. So that was awfully sweet of him. And when you got hungry, they even had you covered. They had some pizzas that you could order. Um, I think the pizzas did come in from out of, they have them ordered in. Pizza time. Pizza, pizza. But the, the beers are brewed there, so that's kind of neat. If you're drinking, you don't want your hand to get cold or you don't want your hot hand to warm up your drinks. So I picked me up a nice little Two Plumbers Cozy and these things are handy. I've never actually put one on a pint glass before, but I put it on there and I actually kind of like it. So I think I got a new, not just cans, but pint glasses too. And then also, to hold your coins, they have these really nifty little um, coin holders. Now, some of you kids may be a little too young to remember arcades from the 80s, but these were a big thing in the 80s. <laughs> pop it in your pocket and that quarter just pops right out of there. It's spring-loaded. Totally awesome. Yeah, just a heads up, if you go to Two Plumbers and now it is set up to take quarters in all of the machines. So, you know, there's no free play or anything, no cover charge, but Get one of these and it's not going to matter. You'll be popping through those quarters yep. in no time. Hey, look at the bright side. I lasted a little bit longer than I do when I had sex. <laughs> Your poor wife. That was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> After that, it was back to the Airbnb, and wow, there were some drinks going around. Hey, everybody. Hey, cheers. Cheers. Mo Game Con. Mo Game Con, baby. Mo 
If I die because of this weekend, I'm happy about it. Yes, this is sir. the greatest company to be with. Peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Wow. There were some games being played. Some of these guys were acting like I have never played a game before, and they were shocked. I know. They were a little so, shocked of you uh, winning a few rounds of Mario Kart and some Smash Brothers and everything. Peter Bateman also brought some guitars with him, and so there was some guitar playing just going on, which was a whole heck of a lot of fun. It was just kind of like some people were over here talking, some people were over here playing games, some people were just playing the guitars. Yeah, actually, Robert and Wes both at one point or another, they played a little bit of music or sung along. And even Retro Wolf was mm -hmm. playing some music, so that was very cool alongside of Peter. It was really nice because they knew how to play guitar, didn't they? Yeah, well, I was about to say, and Cap gave it his all with the mandolin. Now this was also when a few gifts were exchanged from gaming off the grid. We got some lovely pint glasses with okay. their logo. Let me tell you, those were put to good use throughout the night. Very much so. Night. Pretty much everybody had their one glass and they filled it up with whatever they had. And what better to put in there but some beer. And look at that. Captain Algebra hooked us up with some new Glarus Brewing Company. He had sent us some of these before, some yes. different flavors. There was an apple one that he sent that I absolutely love. The nice thing I like about this brewing company is it doesn't have a very major hoppy flavor. It, to me, it's not so overpowering as a beer flavor. You get the other flavors in there, which I'm not a very big hops fan. So that's why I really like this brewing company. So we have a few varieties here to try. Some strawberry rhubarb, some Cranbic 2020, and there were a couple of pair, but I think there's only one left. We nope. jumped into one of those yeah, right we, away. Yeah, we drank this. And that wasn't the only gift Captain Algebra hooked me up with. Super Mario World Return to Dinosaur Land. He knows how much I enjoy <laughs> my Super Mario World. So he got me a nice hacked cartridge that I can play in the Super Nintendo. So using that OG hardware. And finally, playing a true sequel to Super Mario World. Sorry, Yoshi's Island. I'm probably gonna put my faith in this. <laughs> a couple years ago, I did play TMNT in Streets of Rage 2. No, I think because TMNT is just a sprite swap. It's the same game, but they've swapped the sprites. I think a ROM hack is when you actually change the game. Like, they took Super Mario World and made this. I think that's what a ROM hack is considered. And Waves and Games finally has some stickers. Well, I say finally. Maybe this was just his first chance to give us a sticker. So we've got the official Waves and Games sticker at last. So thank you, Peter. All right. Saturday morning. It's time for the convention. We may have stayed up just a little. A little bit. Late. The funny thing is, is... Everybody was having a great time staying up late and everything, but then you could start to see people winding down, but nobody was going to be that first person to go to bed. So Tom and I, being the oldest there, decided we're going to do it. We're like, we'll, we'll go. We're like, all right, everybody, I'm going to bed. I got a convention tomorrow. Although Wes apparently took a tumble down the stairs yeah. at one point. It's all right. He said he's like Gumby, and basically yep. he's impervious. <laughs> the nice thing about the Airbnb, it had a very great central location. Mm -hmm. So going to like two plumbers and then the convention center, as well as any restaurant that we wanted to, even a Walgreens later on, it was such a great central location that yep. it took no time at all to get to any of these places. So uh, we had a couple of guys ride over there with us. And we managed to get in because 
everybody there was nice enough to hook us up with a VIP pass. Although, there was a little trade-off. We'll get to that in just a <laughs> moment. So checking out the floor before everyone got in there, Mo Game Con is a one-day convention and they do utilize the space of a gymnasium, but they put that space they to do. excellent yes. use. There were a lot of tables set up and a lot of cool things to see. Now, I know a lot of people kind of balk at the fact that it's only a one-day convention, and some people don't think it's worth their time and effort to go somewhere traveling, but we always try to remind people, one, it's a great convention, and this is a lot of just video games. Sometimes you'll go to conventions and there'll be other things there. MoGameCon is very concentrated on the video games, so you got good hunting, but the best part about it is you have so much extra time if you take the entire weekend to hang out with friends. That's a good point. Having that extra time later on, if you want to just hang out, if you want to do some game hunting yep. in a different area, all great reasons to, like she said, don't skip out on a one day convention. We've got bad fan. What's up? This is bad fan. <laughs> And Clayton again. Clayton again. <laughs> How are you guys? Very so good. good. Good to see you. Now, we did, of course, get the Mo Game Con shirt and Mo Game Con 5. I love this Final Fantasy 5 logo look to the shirt. It works really yep. well. Plus the coloring, all of the logo pieces really pop off of that red, mm -hmm. which is very nice. And it's a nice soft shirt, too. Soft, soft, soft. We also got to meet up with lots of our YouTuber community buddies there. We managed to get some new DK Barrel pictures with them. And they even got us a couple of surprises. <laughs> oh, I, it. I keep a death grip on it. I saw that. It, <laughs> your, your hand came up for just a second. Like, oh, no. Check it out. Add in a retro Mikey 78 sleeve to the collection at last. Mikey, you're going to have to let us know if there is a specific game you want represented in this sleeve of yours. And hey, Dan, let's play another great custom sleeve. Guys, video game dust sleeves. We can't say enough good oh, things about Chris over there. He makes great things. I love the artwork on the front and back of this. And once again, someone's going to have to let us know what game mm -hmm. has the honor of going into your dust sleeve. So, guys, thank you very much. We love these. We love adding them to the collection. Yep. They always look great on the shelves. So, thank you very much. Also got probably one of the coolest business cards ever <laughs> so it is a magnet it's got this nice qr code on the back with the mo game con logo right there in the middle and this is for game and browse now this is a new to us youtube channel but we've already been checking out a lot of their videos and this nerdy couple were freaking awesome they were a lot of fun to hang out with and talk to but i'm sorry guys we're still the best nerdy couple out oh, there. Oh, oh, she's throwing the gauntlet. I'm throwing down. the gauntlet down, man. <laughs> what we're not throwing down though is this sweet magnet. No. This is going on the fridge. Yes, Thank it you is. so much for that. I challenge you to a duel. I accept. Whenever it comes to a convention, a lot of people always ask, hey, what are you looking for? And we're just looking for whatever catches our eye, really. Yep. Anything that is kind of an oddball item that usually lures me in right away. So I will pick up weird stuff like 
a Sega CD two pack <laughs> of rock paintings. Great music plus graphics. And then Hot Hits, Adventurous New Music Sampler. So I'm pretty sure <laughs> this is just a music sampler pairing of discs, but it's it's branded for the Sega CD. I honestly cannot wait to check that out. <laughs> you know, weird stuff like this, it always, always catches me. Uh, you've got some Hostile Youth, uh, Sweet Talker. I mean, there are a couple of names that I do remember hearing. Oh, anyone ever heard of Fleetwood Mac? <laughs> Jimi <laughs> Hendrix? <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna talk about little tiny musicians, I guess. Is this your first purchase? The day? Uh, no, I think I, I think I picked something up earlier. I kept buying stuff for other people earlier. So your first purchase for you today? That may be the case. <laughs> All right, thank thank you, sir. I appreciate it. What was something that caught your eye? When we walked in the door, there was a giant Sonic the Hedgehog that I told Tom, I need to get over there. And I kid you not, we took, what, two steps in the door and I saw someone purchase it. I couldn't even find out how much it was. That thing went fast. I was so upset. I really shouldn't have to explain this again. I'm fast. I'm so fast. <laughs> but at the very next booth over, there was an entire big shelf of those My Pet Monsters. And I have been eyeballing those things for ever. I can never find one either completely intact or at a price that I'm willing to pay for. And honestly, I had no idea there were so many different variants of it. There was a little thing when I went over and looked at it that I completely forgot ever existed in this world. And have you ever had one of those times when just a memory comes flooding back and you're like, how did I forget this? Well, that would be this. I had one of these, this exact one when I was a kid, but the minute I saw it, it flooded back and I was like, oh my gosh. I had this little guy. This was mine. And I remember my parents got me this one because they couldn't afford the big My Pet Monster. So they got me the baby one. And the funny thing is I have never seen this since I was a kid. So it's not like I've ever encountered this in the wild in pieces or because a lot of times, you know, like the chains will be lost or whatever. But it's like this is the first time I've seen this since I was probably seven years old. Got your cuddly ugly. Yes, the one I had as a kid. So. <laughs> Thank you. My pet monster. He's bigger than big. When he fights battles, he always wins. And he's your friend, too. He breaks his chains. Put him on you and break away, too. With my pet monster, you're busting loose. He's big. And scary. And helps people, too. And he's your friend, too. My pet monster plays all day. Tough. Awesome. Looking great. And all your friends will want him for their friend, too. My pet monster has breakaway chains from Amtoy and American Greetings Company. Soup of the day, whiskey. Later in the day, I actually did pick up a couple of games uh, for the Xbox of the 360 of all things. Now, Gun Valkyrie, this Sega game for the original Xbox, it caught my eye because I feel like I've heard this title before. Like maybe it's one of those games that people have talked about. I don't want to go so far as to say a hidden gem, but maybe it's been brought up a time or two. But it was complete. Everything looked to be in good order. I bought both of these at the same booth and I got a really nice price for both of them. So I couldn't resist. And then Bullet Witch. This one, the way that the cover looks, I mean, everything about it and some of the action on the back. Kind of seems a little reminiscent, a little bit of like lollipop chainsaw, like with her shorts, like plaid skirt and chainsaw kind of a thing. Almost yeah, like a schoolgirl. I girl. can see that.
Xbox and 360. How about that? Just goes to show, sometimes if you don't go with looking for anything or a list, sometimes you find some fun stuff. Now, something that I like to collect is just those stupid little handheld things, like the Tiger Electronics stuff, or like a solitaire handheld thingy. Not really any kind of specific game or anything like that. I just like them, especially the ones that the weirder looking the better. So I found myself a very cute little um, pinball machine. But what makes it so neat is you fold it up like the back of the pinball and you pull the little thing. That is clever how it has this mm -hmm. raised scoreboard up here. And then, but mm -hmm. then that it actually uses a plunger action yep. to send the ball. And then just folds up. Or, you know, maybe it could be like a, like a. That's where I. It's what, what I would have done as a kid. It would have. I would have totally used this as some kind of Star Trek thing. Been like, ooh, he's dead, Captain. Even though I don't specifically go in with anything in mind to look for, I am keeping an eye out for Nintendo Power. Eventually, I want to collect the full set, but I'm starting off trying to get that first 100. And I was 11 away from that. Well, this knocks it down to 10 Ooh. because I found one issue I didn't already have. So this is the nice silver covered one. It's like oh, a nice. false cover <laughs> for issue 56 with Mega Man X. And I remember reading this one I'm so much. I'm surprised that it still has that bonus cover on it. Hey, beyond that, it's got the subscription card in here. It does still have the poster intact, which... Whether or not you care about the poster, the fact that there's stuff on the back, that's what I always look for. If you're missing the poster, you're missing this guide. It also has oh in here... Oh my gosh, was that a magic eye? That's right. Oh, I used to love those. How weird is it when... I remember when those were really big and popular, you would see people just like staring off into nothingness at a picture and you're like, wow, they're really contemplating that. It's like, no, they're just trying to make the 3D picture come out. <laughs> <laughs> it has the contest cards not even filled out and in the back you even have your power challenge trading cards all of them you know so, completely intact those pages are in really good condition i wonder if anybody even read that one the other book that i found because i do keep an eye out on strategy guides and i just went with the golden eye one honestly i really didn't play <laughs> golden eye when i was younger and I, it's not exactly the type of game that you really need a guidebook for i'm sorry i can't not giggle at that cover but it was in great shape so i decided to add it to the collection especially since it's one of those official nintendo players guides and what she's giggling at is if you look at mr bond holding the gun in front of his mouth it kind of looks like his jaw goes off to the side a little bit. You know, they did that because Pierce is so damn good looking. They needed to do something that to take away from you just staring at that beautiful face of his. And so they had to make him look goofy. So you play the game. <laughs> <laughs> Show us that wonderful, beautiful golden eye face with his uh, stretched out mug. Uh, he keeps smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I got Nostalgios from John Riggs. <laughs> so we were super excited to see John Riggs come there and we got to hang out with him and talk to him for a little while. You need some uh, reading material? I don't know if you have the special glasses or not to... Uh... <laughs> and I meant to get one of these at Siege, but I completely forgot. I think it just slipped my mind. So I was so happy that he was there because I could pick one up. So I'm getting a book this time. Finally got, Finally got it. it, I forgot. I literally forgot. I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm coming back for one of those. Perfect. It's just a bunch of really cool, funky cereals that we used to have when we were kids, you know, like Pac-Man or I think there's some like old Dunkin' Donuts in here. They made cereal out of them. They everything. really did. There's even Hot Wheels, ice cream, just all kinds of things. And then some little facts about it and some just, just some fun tidbits. But it's just literally like it's, you know, nostalgios. It's really walking down that nostalgic lane. Now about midway through the day, we needed to follow up on a promise. I did. And it was time to be part of a game show. Welcome to your 2021 Mo Game Con Game Show. I'm your host, Helen. Uh, you might have seen me on YouTube with Game and Browns. I do videos with my husband, Aaron, who's around here somewhere. So I'll be one of your hosts today and my wonderful co-host. I'm Red Sonia. Um, I stream on Twitch. I'm a speedrunner. The Cuphead blindfolded. You might have heard of it, maybe. She's pretty awesome. The funny thing is they called it Family Feud. What was it like? Family Feud Jeopardy Wheel of Fortune? With just <laughs> a hint, like a dash, a pinch. Just get that salt of Double Dare in there. <laughs> 
so Game and Browse and Red Sonia, some great YouTubers. They are going to have links in the description below. Of course, they were putting this on and they did a tremendous they job did a great hosting. Job, yes. Really great job, guys. And we, with Retro Mikey, went up against the team with Captain Algebra, Peter Bateman of Waves of Games, and someone that they pulled from the audience because I don't know where Retro Wolf was. Probably I know. still digging through some games. Yeah, probably. But this was a lot of fun. What we will probably do is post the whole video of that mm -hmm. so that you can see it in its entirety. There were some issues, obviously, with the buzzers, and mine was a little slow at times, so even though I knew the answers, they were claiming I wasn't buzzing in fast <laughs> enough, but whatever. What it comes down to, though, is it was a video game challenge, and I totally smoked Captain Algebra. <laughs> Now he's going to so blame. Maybe there was something up with the arcade stick no. slipping. Nope, no. Nope, and you know what? Nope. Hey, no, no, no. <laughs> you, you know what? No. <laughs> it was a win by default, but I will take it. Default. The two sweetest words in the English language. Default, default, default. Classic gamer blaming the controller. Now, they did win. <laughs> Spoilers, so they got the goodie bags, but we did walk away with some pretty cool trophies. Yeah. And actually, Peter set you up pretty well. He, he did. He had a little party yep. gift for you. One of the games in their goodie bags had a fun cartridge color in it, and he knows I like those, so he went ahead and gave it to me. So. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. A little game called Twinkle Tail. I'm not going to lie, we know absolutely nope. nothing about this, but that just means it's going to be all the more fun to check out. And yeah, you know, even if you don't like the game, yeah. you've got this nice I got the fun cartridge. cartridge. Doesn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> now, they actually did have a few more rounds of the game show going on throughout the day, and I've heard good things. I've mm -hmm. heard that more and more people were jumping in there, participating, getting in there to watch. We did have a pretty good turnout in the room ourselves when we, we were did, doing We did, we did. And again, it was so much fun. This is something that I hope stays and returns. I, I hope it's a mainstay because it really brings in the attendees it does and the people on hand and i mean it's just a great time with your fellow gamers it was back down to the floor briefly before we went and got some lunch and even though this isn't a tlc episode what did you manage to find well that would be goosebumps and i totally did not expect to see this <laughs> but uh we were at retro tony's booth and like way back in the back he had a big old stack of goosebumps and i was like are those goosebumps books and he goes, yeah, I got about a dollar a piece on it. Nobody has noticed those today and nobody ever buys them from me. And I was like, Haha, well, you're talking to the right girl because I collect my goosebumps. No human being would stack books this way. <laughs> so I found a few titles I didn't have and then one that I had never seen, a big old thick uh, hardbound version of it. It is supposed to like boo or holler or something but the somebody took the battery out of it but he's he's pretty sure that you just have to replace the battery and it'll it'll make noise again so still nice find yep. and who would have guessed i know a game i know i'm so excited <laughs> hey hey dad so, let's play the coolest YouTubers. Definitely in Missouri. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's oh, yeah. get that. Let's get that qualifier on there. <laughs> the last video game that I picked up while there was I got a good deal on Oni Chanbara Chaos. It's a nice PS4 big box game. This is the Banana Split Limited Edition, and it comes with some fun things inside. It's behind the bikini art book because this game is bikinis, plus swords, <laughs> plus zombies, plus chainsaws, equals chaos. Who doesn't want to play that? It also had a music collection CD that was sealed, but you better believe I tore into that. And there's even the racy downloadable strawberries and banana costume, which I don't know if I can get away with showing that. Although, I don't know if I can exactly show the disc and 
getting that out of the case. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bad, bad boy for getting this game, I think. Dirty boy, dirty, dirty, dirty. I did find myself another plushie. I got a cool little Mario from 1988, and he is all fuzzy furry. <laughs> and um, his the way his mouth is kind of makes him look like a little buck tooth. Thought he was cute, a little smashed, but sure uh, but we can fix that. I think he was packed away for a <laughs> while, he was. as he is. Another fun thing that I got, we've been playing a lot of Minecraft lately with Sega Head. So I picked myself up a little 3D perler creation here of a baby zombie riding a chicken. So we got a fun little chicken jockey here. So you know, this was a very cool table. They had a lot of 3D perler designs and it was really cool to see that. Honestly, I don't feel like I've seen a lot of 3D no, stuff. No, not too much 3D. Usually just kind of the flat pieces. So this was really neat. I had to kind of rein myself in because she had a lot of sculpts that I wanted. She really but did. I was like, no, no, just just get the one. <laughs> one of our favorite arcade games. We love playing it anytime we see it anywhere, but I found a little tabletop version. <laughs> now I have been seeing this everywhere, but it's always, you know, about 30 or 40 bucks, and I don't want to pay that. I don't pay 10 bucks for that, definitely. So I was super excited to finally find a tabletop burger time. Very cool. Very cool. And then Evelyn from 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 he <laughs> him man. From this point forward, I'm no longer Evelyn. You may call me Goodlin. Huh. You know, I always thought your name was Evelyn. Honestly, the only reason I picked her up was because there was one day I was at Walmart, I was gonna get her, then I put her back for some whatever reason. Haven't seen her since. This was they had this for the exact same price as Walmart, so I was like, why not? So hey, yeah, perfect. That's why I got you don't usually get modern toys at a retro convention, but hey, who cares? last purchase that I made of the day, literally, um, as we were walking out the door, I saw it out of the corner of my eye. And it was like one of those slow motion wind blowing its hair back. Just, <gasps> I have been looking for one of these for a really, really long time now. I've been seeing a bunch of people pick it up. Jay picked it up. I think it was either Riff or Gabo. I can't remember which one picked it up at Siege. And I'll go to a convention and I'm looking for him, looking for him, can't find him. And then I see someone walking around with it. So clearly it was at the convention, but I didn't get it to in time. And this time I did. For those of you who don't actually know what this is, it's not a lunchbox. It is a bag to transport your NES around to uh, your friend's house if your mom was cool enough to let you take it over to a friend's house. The other nice thing is it's in really, really good condition. So Tom and I are at Mo Game Con, and check out what I found, Jay. I finally have my own now. So yeah, we finally got the Z bag. What do you think, Jay? You got a Z bag. That's friggin' sweet. Now you don't have to be a D bag. You picked it up because you wanted it anyway. Right but it just so happens we needed it. We put this to good use because there was one more thing we left with. 
Got an AC adapter, some controllers, all the hookups you need, and NES. And this one's been painted white. Look at that. You've got this lovely Final Fantasy decal. Gorgeous. I mean, this is old school right here, but doesn't that look nice? We got hooked up by Good To Go Gaming. So these guys, they buy, they sell, they trade video games. They are on their website, www.goodtogogames.com. These guys hooked us up with one of the awesome creations that they've been doing. I mean, come on, how often do you get to add a really cool yep. custom and modded NES? Because I believe all the internals are oh, yeah. nice and new pieces. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna sit there popping that cartridge in, taking it out time and time and time again, blowing on it, messing up that game. No, no, no. This is gonna be firing right up for you. And you've got such a cool display piece. Now the nice thing is, is they had quite a few of these there to choose from. So this is a new thing that they're doing now is, is basically customizing um, game systems. And it was kind of a hard choice for us. Yes, they had a really cool looking Zelda one there. Mm -hmm. I do like my Zelda stuff, but you know, something about this white console with the Final Fantasy logo was really calling to me. I, I just couldn't resist this. <laughs> so chances are we're probably going to be going to the website ourselves oh, yeah. Checking to out see what more. else they have that maybe they didn't want to take to Mo Game Con. <laughs> and in the meantime, we'll be hoping that we run into them again. Yes. And uh, you guys will have to let us know if you find anything on their website. Again, that is good to go games. All one word, the number two, dot com. And we'll have a, down below a link to them. But yeah, it was kind of funny because when, when we got it, they were like, do you want a bag? And I was literally holding on to my Z bag and I was like, no, I have one. So uh, True. And you know what? <laughs> that really was the perfect piece it to was. move this around because, you know, when you, you have something yeah. this nice, you don't want it just kind of rattling around in a bag. So you, you put it in the nice <laughs> custom carrying case for it. <laughs> Now, of course, while we were out and about on the floor, you know, you'd cross paths with Peter, with Cap. <laughs> no, we got it! Damn it! You saw me coming. <laughs> What's up? Um, Peter decided to go halvesies on Crusader Senti with me. That's so sweet. Right, like halvesies, 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 like three, three layers. Well, though. I figure, like, if we could take everybody in the Airbnb, I mean, that's just splitting it eight ways, okay? That's pretty doable. That's, yeah, yeah, I guess. That's 250 each. <laughs> all the others, you know, seeing all those familiar faces again. B-roll of you getting B-roll of me getting B-roll of you getting B-roll. <laughs> uh, Got G was actually running a table there, as was Retro Mikey. They were and all wheeling and show dealing. Show me Retro. Retro Tony. Hey, Dad, let's play. I mean, oh my gosh. Even Austin was there. That this was so was much fun to see busy, him again. Busy place. Yeah. So at the end of the day, as things were wrapping up, we headed out. We had to make a stop by Walgreens to mm -hmm. get some uh, some more supplies. We need some more supplies. We need to hydrate ourselves because, you know, there was a lot of alcohol being drunk, so we wanted to get some water. Well, this one always wants to check the toys. And you know what? Uh, yeah. It was a good thing have she to. did because look at the surprise pickup. Boom! Freaking Friday the 13th, Part 7, the New Blood, Neka Jason Voorhees figure. I didn't even know this guy was out yet because I hadn't seen him anywhere. This is the one that I've been waiting on for That's quite a while. That's your favorite, isn't it? I love the way Jason looks in this. Maybe in the it's future. It's got one of my favorite kill uh, weapons in there. The, what you, like the pole saw? Is it's that like what you would call it? It's like a weed eater, Yeah, I like think. a weed eater on a pole. I don't know. But it's just, a, it's a fun weapon. It's a fun kill. You know, we, we've picked up a couple of other Jasons, you know, since, since the first Jason Voorhees video. So we may have to uh, <laughs> get him out pretty soon and, and do another video showing him off. It's time for a closer upper. Back at the house, there seemed to be a little less energy. I think the day might have taken its toll on everyone. In your favor. Oh, like a kid with his bag full of Halloween candy. I think everyone was ready to just kind of 
mellow out hang out so again some more drinks some more great company uh, mikey came over bros came over we had a full house we need some discard level cable management we needed something to eat we might have made a mistake what have you got i've got a hundred white castle sliders this is our family thanksgiving our yeah, family thanksgiving or created a new tradition. I think we created a monster slash tradition. <laughs> but we had a hundred White Castle burgers delivered to the house and we brought them and put them on the table and lined them up. And then it was literally like piranhas at a feast. We let some of the guys figure up how much eat they thought each guy was gonna eat. And I'm pretty sure they thought like that everybody was gonna eat 10 burgers a piece. <laughs> It's the best decision we've ever made as a group of friends since we've known each other. Well, we also thought that this might be, you know, surprising White Castle. Apparently not. They had a box oh, yeah. already for that. It literally said 100 White Castle burgers on the outside of the box. So, guess people do it all the time. <laughs> got some more game time in. Almost got sick from the burgers. Almost got sick from Peter's concoction. He made his own <laughs> peanut butter milkshake, milk stirrup. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I he's going to call that, but it was it was gross. I don't think he'll be making another one of those anytime soon. If, if within the next 24 hours, Peter doesn't blow out his O-ring, it will be a modern miracle. Yeah, we're all coming. Peter, Peter, and you got it. Fortunately, though, we were there with a great drink. Lady Lacey's world famous peanut butter and jelly shots. Well, cheers, fellas. Cheers. cheers. Amazing, right? Mm. Very good creation, mm. Lacey. Thanks, guys. It's so smooth. Hey, everybody. Hey, good cheers. Mo Game Con. Mo Game Con. Day 21. It's peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> First of all, look at a cute bag. It's peanut butter it's jelly. Peanut butter jelly time. <laughs> but we also had a new image put together. We did. We got Lady Lacey's famous peanut butter and jelly shots with the uh, fancy little divided shot glasses, which really enhances the flavor. And then, of course, the two major ingredients, the peanut butter whiskey and the Chambord. After the success of the shots at Siege, I immediately got in touch with our artist link in the description below if you ever need anything done they do good work they do and put together this image which came out amazing once she saw it she fell in love with I it did, yeah had to have it on a tote so that's what we did and now it is the official carry and tote yep. of all so the supplies this is what we put our shot glass in with the <laughs> the alcohol beverages all right well sunday morning finally came and we actually all got up at a pretty early time, even though yeah. we stayed up late. Not as late as the night no. before. But everybody pitched in, helped clean up the place. Really, really appreciate that. So, Robert, Wes, Cap, Peter, Matt, Newland, thank you guys so much for helping us get all that cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Having the Airbnb in order before we checked out and hit the road. Hello, Cappy. Would you like a balloon? <laughs> Cap's like, no way, dude. It was nice for a change that we got to be home first before everybody else. <laughs> Unlike Siege, when everybody else was sending messages, hey, I'm home, I'm having fun, relaxing, and we're still got six hours left to go. <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, there you guys have it. Mo GameCon 2021 is now in the books. We are already ready for the next Mo GameCon as well as the next convention. I believe Midwest Gaming Classic is the one that we have on our books next. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we will see you guys there if anybody can make it. Please give the video a like if you happen to like it and start leaving some comments down below on any of these pickups. Or if you happen to go to Mo Game Con, maybe we crossed paths, missed you. 
it could be possible. We did leave Saturday to go have lunch mm -hmm. at the Mellow Mushroom. Yes. It was a very cool place. It was. Nice pizzeria. Yeah. Some great appetizers, too, by the way. If we missed you, we're very sorry, but let us know what you thought of the convention yourself and if you're going to go back. And anybody who has not gone, as she said near the start of the video, don't skip out yeah. just because it's a one-day convention. It is still a lot of fun, and you can really make some great memories hanging out with your friends. Yeah, and if you see us there, come up and say hi. And if I don't know who you are, don't feel bad. I'm very overwhelmed at conventions. <laughs> so sometimes I forget who this guy is. What I do, I do me. <laughs> we love getting to say hi to all you guys. All right, well, one last time. Uh, comments, likes, notification bell, subscribe if you would. Check those links in the description below. Some really great channels and some really great websites for you guys to take a look at. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Go over to Tee Public. We have merchandise over there. There might be a new image over there. Hit us up on the Retro Refresh. And if we like it, we got it for Mo Game Pass. Still on the show. <laughs> Bye, nerdlings. Bye, nerdlings. Do, 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 do. It's like the ghost of Captain Past. <laughs> it could be. Yeah. I can play anything on trumpet. <laughs>